This lesson deals with ideal sources. You can find these notes in the ECE 201 ebook in chapter two, starting on page 11. In this lesson, we're gonna introduce two more idealized circuit elements. The first is an ideal voltage source, and the second will be an ideal current source. An ideal voltage source provides a voltage independent of the current flowing through it. Here are three symbols for voltage sources. Our first one here is a circle with a plus and minus inside of it. This is probably our most general symbol for a voltage source can label a voltage across the terminals and we'll define the current such that the unit is absorbing power. This is our default definition for anything. But in reality, this is usually going in the other direction, that our voltage source generates power. Just label the value V sub S of T along the side here. Now there's two other special cases. If you know that V of S is a multi-cell battery, then you could show the following symbol with a long and a short and a long and a short line indicating the cells of the battery. If you have a DC power supply, we just showed that with a one long and one short. In all cases here, the voltage V sub S is known, but the current is unknown. It's really unspecified and becomes determined by the circuit that we connect the voltage source into. We can also do some graphs of our voltage versus time. If we had a DC source or a battery, then our voltage would be constant with time. If this is the case, we could also do a sketch of voltage and current, where we've got voltage on the X axis and current on the Y axis. So if we had a 12 volt battery, then we would have 12 volts here with a current could be either positive or negative or zero. Case would be zero current with a battery just sitting on a shelf in a store. We could be charging the battery, so the current would be going into the plus terminal, or we could be discharging the battery or it's turning a light on or something else, and current would be coming out of the terminal. An ideal current source is similar to an ideal voltage source, but here the current is independent of the voltage across it. So here the words current and voltage are being interchanged. This is the idea of duality in circuit theory. Two very different things, but there's some similarity in terms of their expressions or their characterizations. The symbol for a current source is a circle with an arrow inside of it, indicating the direction of current flow. So current's flowing in this direction. Our default definition is to make everything absorbing power, so the plus terminal would be here in the minus terminal. So we're entering the plus, coming out of the minus. Just labeling the value I sub S of T here. Now if you know that I sub S is a constant, then we use another symbol, just a capital letter with a capital subscript. This is our default notation for DC. So in the case of our voltage source when it was a battery, we also use an uppercase V and an uppercase S. Now you don't have to do that, but that's just what you'd see in schematic drawings or maybe in magazine articles or application notes. In all cases here, the value of current is known but the value of voltage isn't. In other words, it's arbitrary or unspecified. It takes on the value determined by the rest of the circuit. Here too, we can make some sketches if I sub S were constant. In other words, just same value for all time. Then you could do a plot of voltage versus current where the current is specified, but the voltage can be positive, can be negative, or could be zero. You can also take a look at our previous lesson, we talked about an open circuit and a short circuit. We had a similar graph where I sub S was zero for the open circuit, and the value of voltage was zero for the short circuit. And that would be this graph on page 11, where this is equal to zero, slid over here. And these are some properties of ideal sources.